Hello, we hope you're doing well. A lot of big controversial topics in today's episode of CSK News, and because of that, I'm going to push all the thank yous, all the future announcements to the back half of the episode. If you guys care about my other channel, that kind of stuff, and I, I will uh, give you guys a huge thank you and that kind of stuff in the back half of the episode. Let's get into our first story out there. Going to be the last time we speak about Doc for the current present time because I'm going to talk about it next if he either proves himself innocent or guilty. I know a lot of you guys watching are also very sick about hearing about Doc updates to his story. If you guys don't know his story, well, you probably should search him on YouTube. You guys would find out a, a lot long extended past about what he might be or what he may not be and we're going to find out sometime in the future hopefully but also on top of that I do want to kind of bounce off the topic if you guys were aware of this it was actually back last month mid to late last month it was Chris J Mouse Sports's Chris J who offered Doc to come to his house as well as vice versa Chris J would go to his house to either stream and on top of that with Mike and face cam it was pretty much Chris J offering Doc an opportunity to come out and actually prove himself to be the person he said he is and of course all the sketchy clips out there the long backstory no one really knows what exactly is true about Doc. It was pretty much Chris J offering himself up uh, to be kind of a stream partner for Doc, maybe make himself a little bit more comfortable on stream with a mic and, a, and of course a webcam. And it was actually uh, Doc considering the option and apparently last second he did deny that. It was Chris J who went to stream and said apparently Doc said his main reason why he couldn't was because he was 18, he wasn't 18 years old yet. So kind of a weird decision obviously. It does make a little bit of sense why Doc would not trust a, a player to come to his house or go to a player's house. Although Chris J is very well known uh, I don't think he's going to try anything suspicious with Doc. It was a big denial there. And on top of that, we now face it offering Doc another instance, another another uh, hand, if I may say so, to actually prove himself, and whether he's innocent or guilty. And it's actually face it, according to Nell, as well as other sources out there, apparently face it is going to have an event this weekend in the Netherlands. They're going to invite several streamers out there, several figures in the CSGO scene to actually show up at the event. They'll be mic'd up, they'll have webcams, and it's to simulate a whole LAN environment. So a lot of other players out there apparently are going to be going, or at least we're in invited and Doc was actually on that list. So according to this, Face It is now offering another extended hand to Doc to actually prove the entire situation wrong. And as of right now, Doc has actually gone cold, no longer responding to my DMs. I'm not really sure if he's talking to Nell or anyone else out there. As of right now, I would assume he probably is not going to go to the event and the drama will continue. So for the future reference, for all of you guys who are curious, I will not cover any more Doc stories until we know whether he's telling the truth or whether he's lying. This will be the last time we talk about that. But Face It offering a big extension out there to prove if he is real. But in very big controversy, now it might mean nothing to all of you, but I really want your comments down below response to exactly what this was. We had Face It announced very last second a new major rule. Now in the past, of course, many of you guys are aware about this. Any teams, any players participating in the minor system at all for the major cannot play for other teams. We've had a few instances in the past. I think Fnatic was one of them. I can't remember which player it actually was, but a few teams have actually broken this rule um, kind of very sneakily without it going. But in most circumstances, guys, this, this has actually not been the case. Many teams out there, most teams, 90 95% of teams out there have to abide by these rules unless it's been snuck through. These rules have been followed ever since. So pretty much a player out there, if they play for any team, any team in the minor system at all, it can be minor qualifiers, the minor, the major qualifier, they obviously cannot be traded away to another team that is also in the major. That's been the set rule, set in stone ever since the initiation of these majors, or at least for the past uh, three to four years so far. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere this past week, we had faced and announced a brand new rule out of nowhere. And again, at the start of this major process, we thought the rule was the same as it was in the past, and this kind of snuck under the radar. We actually have faced it now announcing that apparently all minor attendees can actually play for any major teams. And a pretty big rule, especially because this was, again, like I said before, under the radar. We assumed it was the same as it was in the past, and why they would announce this now, it was were we confused? As well, we do have faced it saying this is the same rule they had in place ever since they announced they were going to be the major organizer. So a, a pretty big a controversy out there. We actually had Optic Gaming's coach come forward and say what was on probably a few people's minds out there. This seems pretty pretty sketchy, or at least it could be. And again, this obviously is a big assumption out there, but this could be a coercion of a big organization out there, <laughs> like maybe Cloud9, who is a broken roster, who would obviously have a much better chance to maybe try and hire some of those players who have been in the minor system. We'll talk about who that could be in a couple of minutes here. But he brought up a great point that, again, was probably on a few people's minds out there. I briefly thought about it, but again, to actually kind of coerce, face it, to actually make this new rule seems like a pretty, a pretty sketchy thing to do. It'd be pretty easy to get caught by. So what do you guys think? about this. If Face It was working with some organization out there, it could be Cloud9, it could be another roster that's actually at the major. There's 24 teams currently going to the major that obviously could change their rosters. Now, most of those teams are not in the same state as Cloud9 is. They're Cloud9 relatively broken comp comparatively to all their 23 other teams at the major right now, but it's going to be pretty easy to identify. Now, we'll never probably know for sure, but we're going to see in the next two weeks or so before this major does hit which teams actually change their lineup with players who are in the minor, and then we can maybe kind of put the pieces together as to whether 
Faceit was working with other organizations out there. Do you guys think Faceit would do this? I really don't think so. I think maybe more likely is the instance that the rule was kind of just going under the radar. No one really questioned it until up until now, and Faceit felt the need to announce that yes, minor players can actually play for major teams now. But again, it could be a big thing out there, and I'm really thankful that the Optic coach actually called them out for it. And now we can actually see if Cloud9 signs other players out there, if it maybe was suspicious activity. But also talking about that, I did actually have Ocelot respond to me on Twitter. There were several instances out there where MBK had this tweet on screen. And as you guys can see, Ocelot retweeted that tweet. I also was tweeting out a bunch of things about, you know, will it be free though? Will he be free to pick up from other teams? Because MBK obviously offering himself forward other teams in the major, saying he was available. Then we had the owner Ocelot retweeting that. You might think, okay, MBK says he's available. The, the owner of, uh, of course, MBK, his owner right now of G2, who has him under contract, retweets that. You might might think, okay, MBK is free to pick up. That wasn't the case. As Ocelot did respond and make it very clear, and I, I guess it's my fault for assuming things, but the fact that he was liking all these tweets, he retweeted his own player's tweet saying he was available to stand in for a team. I thought maybe, just maybe, Ocelot would have a place in his heart to let his player go just for one event for free, but that is not the case. He made that very clear with his response to me, which again, I'm not going to blame the guy. It does make absolute sense, but he is definitely, he's a weird one to watch, but it does actually bring up a great point as well. All the players that are now available to teams like Cloud nine and again I really can't think of any other teams that would make huge changes going into the major maybe a few minor teams who thought one of their players was lacking um, but again those minor teams are just coming off big big matches themselves and you really can't kick a player now that they're gonna have stickers so it's a really interesting interesting topic you really can only think of it leave a comment down below what are the teams you guys can think actually could use players right now and again players like MBK apex they're not gonna be free players like scream Kiyoshima they would be free so you kind of gotta uh, of course weigh that I guess the one expense you'd be probably paying Ocelot, I don't know who, I can't even think of a sum right now, you'd be paying him something though for Apex or MBK as opposed to you give Scream sticker money and he might join your team for pretty much free. So it's definitely a debatable topic out there. I cannot wait to see if Cloud9 does pick up some players out there. And again, you could have maybe an MIBR roster change, maybe Cloud9. We've had several uh, screenshots out there of Cloud9's owner Jack following Cold Zera, following MBK, Scream. He's been following everyone. So what do you guys think is going to happen? Leave a comment down below. And then we're going to finally figure out if Face it was coercing with a big organization out there. They probably weren't, but it's definitely fun to think about. And just a quick intermission here in my kitchen. I just want to thank also all of you guys for watching because somehow, I don't know how, out of nowhere, we're actually sponsored for this episode as well as two other episodes. That's three episodes in total with CS Money. So huge shout to them. If you guys don't know, actually a great place to trade your skins or actually buy skins as well. They have brand new features on their website. They'll be linked down below for this episode and the next two. And honestly, just thank you all for watching because without that sponsor, I couldn't actually actually be in this kitchen eating food right now. So honestly, thanks to CS Money. Thank you all for showing support and actually click the link down below. It's actually a really great platform to trade your skins. But anyway, back to Spastic Jake who's just probably talking too fast. And also in very big news, which does seem to be resolved or slowly being resolved as I record this video. By the time you guys watch it, it's probably okay. Super Stidham, a very well-known CSGO YouTuber out there, apparently being blackmailed. Now I'll show you guys the messages he's been receiving on screen, and I do definitely feel for the guy, so I'm not really sure what we can do to help him. Obviously, uh, luckily enough, he did get in contact with YouTube after this conversation. I'll show you guys very shortly here, but I do feel for the guy, because my, myself speaking, I'm a very small YouTuber compared to him. I did actually live stream pretty frequently back in the day. I was blackmailed. Uh, a few times in the past with a phase instance, uh, live streaming randomly, you'll have random people ever email you with these three threats against your family. I definitely feel for the guy, but luckily enough, he did post this later on and YouTube has responded and apparently going to solve the issue. So I guess some CSGO blackmailing going on. Luckily enough, these kind of people, they can go burn, they can go rot in the in the bad place. But also in very big news, I announced a couple of videos ago, the Imperial, the rising team out there. They actually won a DreamHack event not too long ago. They were a rising team. And I announced last week, of course, the player controversy between Crystal and S Esperanto. We actually had Crystal, the new team IGL. He got along and actually did quite well with the team. Statistically for an IGL, he seemed to be fitting pretty well for the team. And it was actually announced about a week and a half ago that apparently Crystal will be staying on the team and their star player. By far and away, their MVP Esperanto will be leaving. And then three days later, apparently according to Nell, other sources out there, that actually that call was switched. And it has been confirmed as of yesterday, guys, it will be Crystal, the IGL, leaving that team. He took the Twitter to confirm about that and they will be keeping their star player. And I asked you guys the question in that video, what's 
more important, a star IGL or a star player? And in this case, we now have our answer, guys. The star player apparently wins. And again, probably not a star IGL, but definitely an IGL that was working for the team. They had consistent results at three separate events with Crystal in the lineup, but apparently it will be Esperanto joining the team. And alongside that, it will be, unfortunately enough, Crystal alongside Tenski leaving that roster. And again, we also have other rumors out there. The Imperial trialing out several players to replace them. It will be Loba, apparently, for right now to actually join that roster alongside Poon. If you guys don't know who Poon is, I didn't really recognize him either. Apparently played for Skitlight. So that roster right now, Team Imperial, losing Tenski, losing Crystal, a pretty much a brand new roster. And they actually were targeting many people out there. One of them actually was Frozen, the 16-year-old who apparently chose a Slovakian team over this roster. So the Imperial going forward, again, they won a DreamHack event, $100,000 event just in June. We're going to see how they do in the future. But apparently the question has been answered. As of right now, MVP player is more important than IGL, at least when it comes to them. But on top of that, guys, big Ross changes for some smaller teams out there who failed to make it out of the North American minor. And that will be first, of course, Swole Patrol. If you guys do know, Freakazoid is still on that roster. They've been fighting their way through ESCA as well as, unfortunately enough, in the minor, they actually did fail to qualify for the major qualifier. They actually first lost Little Man last week and then also Silent. And on top of that, they did take the Twitter to announce for their Star Series qualifiers, they will be picking up Marky and Swag on that roster. So pretty cool to see. Of course, Swag's main roster is off and away and playing. He ever since uh, he left that torqued roster, that torqued, uh, I guess you could say, trio has been doing not really too much as of late, so Swag will stand in for that team, but also for Dignitas, another team who actually failed to make it out of the North American minor for uh, the major qualifier as well. They've also made changes, unfortunately enough, it will be Ricks and Grimm sent to the bench, and two other players, I'm not really sure they're, uh, who they actually are, it will be GMD and Tens to replace them on that roster. So some smaller North American changes out there, nothing too influential, but also I do want to thank you guys as we end out today's CSGO News episode. You guys, you guys blew me away. You guys, you, you guys are honestly amazing. Thank you all so much. If you guys were not here last episode, if you didn't see my esports job announcement, I finally announced last uh, last uh, video to all of you guys what I'll be doing here for my esports job. It will be esports news, and from now on, and every CSGO News episode, I will link our other YouTube channel down below where I'll be covering esports news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you guys blew me out of the water. I, I was beaming yesterday when I got home. Uh, actually, that's that's right now. I'm I'm beaming right now. But it's insane. Like as of right now, we almost broke 700 subscribers in just one day. And that is absolutely insane. I cannot wait to give you guys more content on that channel. And I, I also want to reiterate as well, for all of you guys who did not watch the episode, I will be doing esports news on that channel. And I will be covering CSGO on that channel as well. But I will not stop making videos, at least for now, on this channel. You guys continue to have daily CSGO news updates on this channel. And then we'll do kind of more of recaps on that channel. So pretty much, you guys will see me more frequently on here. And if you guys want bigger recaps, you can watch me on there for CSGO as well. But again, I honestly, I, tr I tried to respond to as many comments as I possibly could. Uh, you guys are insane. Thank you all so much. I, I hope to actually have a sit down, a sit down, either a live stream or a video on here as well, answering your questions about the future, as well as kind of just thanking you guys again, because I seriously cannot think of the words right now to thank all of you. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart, all of you guys who watch my content, all of you guys who subscribe to the new channel, I cannot wait. And also big updates as well. A lot of you guys had uh, critiques about our, our layout over there on the esports talk or esports news channel. As of right now, we're trying to revamp the background graphics. We're trying to revamp the audio. It's a very slow progression. So over the next, give me six months, guys. Give me six months, and I guarantee you the content on that channel will be insane, and I cannot wait to bring all of you guys with me. And uh, again, one last time, thank you, seriously. And I will see you all next time. As always, my name is Jake Mock, you, and I'll see you all then. Goodbye, guys.